Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And today I have a new watch to add to my Casio collection. And this is the well-known Frogman GFW1000. So this is a watch that I'm sure everyone in the Casio space knows about. Um, you know, it is kind of what I've observed to be kind of a staple to any good Casio collection. I feel like the Frogman is always in people's list, but the size can be intimidating. And I have its uh, Casio brother here, or if brother or whatever, but the Range Man here, which is another pretty common popular Casio watch. And this watch I got first, and its size was you know, obviously a concern to me, uh, but wears way more comfortable than I expected. And then with this watch, I kind of also really held off for a while because of its large size. But I'm here to tell you guys that it actually is very wearable. Um, here's the kind of the funny part is that this watch actually in the most kind of typical dimensions, this watch actually is smaller. So let's do some measurements. I'll show you guys something here. So if we look at the width across, so we have an arrangement from button to button, looking at, uh, we'll call it 50, and then from kind of the most probably widest part, I don't know where it would be, maybe like right here, 53 or 54, and then from button by 53. And this one from its shortest, comes in at 49, so less, and it's thickest, 52, also less. Width, or thickness of the watch is 18. Again, it depends if you get this, so again, two dimensions. So it's thinnest is 15 and a half, thickest is 18. Thinnest, 15, 8, and thickest, 17. So close, but this one's a, a little bit thinner. So you would think that if you can wear this watch with comfort, then this one should come you know, just as easily. But there is one big, one big dimension with this watch that makes it gigantic, and that's the lug to lug. So that's where the watch is really shows its size. So let me just throw on the range band first. And I've got maybe just a little bit under a seven inch wrist. So you can kind of see how this one wears very comfortable. I honestly don't have any issues with it. Now where the Frogman really kind of shows its beastly size is going to be the lug to lug because it just you really got to have a good size wrist to pull this one off. Right, and that's right here, this measurement. It's a very long watch, and that's really where its size can become an issue is that lug to lug. But as you can see on my seven inch wrist, um, it works out pretty well. Now the other concern I have with this watch is I'm a lefty. And this watch, unfortunately, or fortunately, whatever you, is not centered. So you can see this watch straight in the middle, and this watch is kind of offset that way. And for a lefty, that kind of worried me because I thought it was going to be digging into my hand. So now, if so, I was worried about this, but really, I can wear it higher up, which actually helps increase the width of my wrist, and it actually feels fine. So I actually, in a way, my initial thought was this watch is not for lefties, but in a way I almost feel like it actually benefits lefties because you can wear the watch higher up the wrist, which kind of eats up some more of that long space. So, um, but you can kind of see here, I can put my wrist, how just how, how long it is. So that's where the watch's uh, big size is going to be on that lug to lug. And if we measure it from like screw to screw, you're looking at about 48. 
versus no well, 47 and a half but that's screw to screw but if you kind of do a realistic one of kind of where it actually protrudes from so if we do it from like kind of maybe to here you're looking at about 64 and then this one almost 69 just kind of because this this does not compress so really you're I would say maybe from like here to here is probably the best way to measure it so needless to say that's kind of where that's where the challenge comes in with this watch is that long to long log but I gotta say it wears you know wears pretty well for a lefty and I thought that was gonna be a challenge but in a way I almost think it's a feature at this point okay so now with uh Kind of the elephant in the room the size out of the way let's talk about this watch and why i really like it so first and foremost this is probably the most like heavy most kind of robust feeling watch out of all my casios i mean you just feel the weight of it and the biggest thing you'll notice right away screw down crown this is really the best way well i guess a monoblock case would be better but next to that a screw down crown is probably gonna be your best way to waterproof a watch like this these screw down ones I mean they're okay but the typical screw back crown is the way to go uh, this will really lock this watch in and prevent any moisture or humidity from getting inside of it now the one thing about this version is this is the mineral glass version so Another benefit is that you have a mineral glass, kind of like this one, but as you can see, the problem with mineral glass is it can get scratched, so you can kind of see right there. So part of me wants to put in a sapphire crystal, just like I did, you know, to this one. So I'm going to have to research that. Um, there's a little more complexity with swapping out the crystal on these watches, and that's because the solar panel is attached to the crystal itself. So with these analog watches, the solar panel is behind the watch face, so you kind of have a you know kind of a more traditional watch build. With these digital one, it is attached glue I presume to the crystal itself so might be might be impossible I don't know but I am gonna explore it so I'll, I'll probably make a video I might strip this watch down and make a video and I'm gonna take a closer look to see is how doable it is because I would love to get a sapphire crystal on this watch I think it could be doable but Otherwise, um, you know, great watch. It just feels very durable. Um, you know, is I mean, this is my favorite Range Man. It's probably just like my, my what I consider my favorite fun watch. Now, this one's going to give it some fun for its money. Now, the downside of this watch is it doesn't have all the like the ABC compass. This watch obviously is geared towards diving, so it does have more kind of aquatic or water focus type features like your it does have the tide and the moon data and then it's got um, some dive and surface uh, interval measurements so you can actually time your dives and log them um, so I haven't really explored how to do that to be honest I, I don't plan on doing that um, but as far as like the watch functionality it's pretty typical of you know of how G-Shocks are you can display time zone or the date and then you can go through your various modes here are your diving logs uh, here shows you the tide data world time alarms stopwatch timer and back to here and if you want to adjust it you just hold this button down and you, can, you know you can go through there and adjust it so pretty standard it's got EL backlit which to be honest I kind of prefer over the LED ones like like this one right there I kind of like the EL a little more 
retro, kind of old school. But that's about it for this watch. I don't have a whole lot more to tell you other than it is big, but it's wearable big. So if you're on the fence about maybe getting a Frogman, but you're just scared about the size, and if you're a lefty, you know, I gotta say, it actually wears much more comfortable than I thought it would on the left hand. I was worried I was gonna be digging in a lot, but not, not an issue at all. I almost like, I like how it sits up higher on the wrist. So it kind of, you know, you get a little more width to work with. So great watch. I, I think you should consider picking one up if, if uh, it's on your list, but the size worries you. So I am going to probably take a peek inside the watch just to see kind of how it's built. So I'll probably make a video about that. So if you're interesting, if you're interested to see in how it's made, but you know what? I'm kind of starting to question something. So I bought this watch secondhand, but now that I'm lo looking closer to it, you can see a gap right here. So I think this might be a screen protector on this watch. Right there. I wonder if someone put a screen protector on this watch and that's what's scratched. That'll be nice. So let's find out. Let me get my tools. We're going to take this watch apart and find out right now. All right. Well, bonus time. I wasn't expecting to be doing this, but now I'm really curious about, about this to see if it is a screen protector on there or not. I'm going to take the bands off first. Kind of give a, get a chance to look at those. Pretty standard type of band. Screw it here. Wow, look at this. I mean, this just shows you how well this watch is built. I mean, look at this thing. This thing's all metal. This is super cool, guys. So, I don't know if you've seen some other videos when I take these watches apart, but these are all just plastic watches inside. This thing is literally all metal. How cool is that? Look at this. Um, now you can see. I mean, wow, you can actually almost wear this watch like that. I mean, look at that. It looks a little goofy, but this is this is a. I mean, this is a nice watch. Now I now I I can kind of see the why these cost as much as they do. I mean, you actually get an all metal built watch inside. This is it's a super cool. So now let's take a look to see if this is a screen protector. Does it see, see what I mean? Doesn't it seem like a screen protector to you? I don't want to pry too hard in case it's not, but let me get something to uh, poke in there and let's find out. But I'm going to have to give his watch a cleaning now that I have it. Maybe it's not. I don't know. Maybe it's not a screen protector. Maybe it looks like it. No, it's not a screen protector. Now that I look closer, that's just a gasket. Darn, I got excited thinking someone put a screen protector over it to protect it. Yeah, this is just a gasket in here. That's what that space is. Excited. Well, it is not a screen protector, but at least it gives us a better look 
at the watch itself. So I want to give this a cleaning here. It's pretty filthy. These buttons come off. No, okay. So I am gonna clean this up and I'll be right back. Okay, I got the watch cleaned up a little bit so now you can kind of really see in all its beauty. But wow, I am really impressed by this watch. Now it kind of makes it, now it all kind of makes sense, you know, why this watch feels so heavy and why it commands such a price premium because, you know, it's got really nice components to build to the, uh, that it's made out of. But now it really makes me want to wish I had a sapphire crystal. So I'm going to have to really kind of do a little homework and see how doable it is. I don't think it is, but I'm going to have to find out. I don't know. I'm tempted to make it on this video right now and just start taking this thing apart, but I wasn't kind of ready to commit to that undertaking, but oh, what the hell. Let's do it. Just kidding. All right. That'll be part two because I, I don't have time right now to take it all apart and I don't want to have all the pieces laying here. So um, I'll come back another video. I'm going to take this apart. We're going to look inside and just see what else we find inside. I'd be curious to see how much it's the same inside or if they went all out on the inside as well. All right. Thanks for tuning in guys and hope you have a, a great day and join me for the next video where we're going to open this one up.